right, thank you, Brian. Uh, I don't know if everyone noticed we got a new intro with our new people and everything. So thank you for doing that. All right. Uh, thank you to everyone for being here. Uh, let me uh, call the November 9, 2020 meeting to order. Um, and we will start uh, with a few presentations, uh, the first being from Edgewood Elementary's environmental group, uh, Tech. Do we have? I see some people back there that look like they're probably this. Looks like that fits the bill. This, this is a, the, uh, the environmental club for kids. And uh, they have been working on um, eliminating single-use plastics. And so uh, they have lots of information they've been gathering and they want to share with Homewood. Fantastic. Yay. Who wants to start? I think Rose is up first, right? Do I talk into this thingy? Yeah. Yes. yes. OK. And, and then Rose, when you finish, toss it back to Brian so he can pull the video up for um, Okay. Yes, thank you. She can pull the mic down. So she can. Yeah. 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 Hi, my name is Rose Gill, and I'm the president of Tech, which stands for the Environmental Club for Kids. We got the idea as we were walking around, and we saw more and more trash everywhere and every day. I got some friends together today to help me. We're fifth graders at Edgewood Elementary School. Our goal is to ban single-use plastic bags from all stores in Homewood. We had a meet we had a past meeting with SHIP and they liked our ideas, so we have an upcoming meeting with Target. Okay, Brian, you wanna roll the video? Hi, my name is Kate. I'm Treasure Tech. I'm going to be talking about these kids in Charleston, South Carolina that did something that we are trying to do. Trying to ban single use plastic. And one, a group of four kids who call themselves James Island Ocean Activists, they talked into the microphone to talk for the animals that can't. One of the kids in the group said that they had collected over 300 signatures from local people that wanted to protect their oceans and beaches. Another one said, and I quote, we care about sea turtles and whales that get sick and die. Their goal is to teach other children about the danger of plastic pollution. Other than talking to city council, they've, been, they've held beach suites, hosted educational events at the Terrace Theater, and, sh and share their concerns during public comment periods. At municipal meetings, when the city of Charleston considered Looks like it's lagging, sorry. Technology. Why don't we go to another one and we'll come back to it. Okay. Good evening. My name is Lauren Smiley and I'm a proud member of the tech group. Here are a few facts about plastic bags. There are about five trillion plastic bags being used in the world every year. There are about 160,000 plastic bags being used each second. You cannot recycle plastic bags with your curbside recycling in Homewood. If you want to know why, when the plastic bags are mixed with other recyclable materials, they jam up the machines at material recovery stations and can find up and can end up causing the city to be fined fees for having the plastic sorted and shipped to a dump with other waste. Plastic bags also place the greatest risk to our wildlife. This is why in the city of Homewood, when you put your recycling at the curb, I agree that you should not include plastic bags. Places like Publix, Target, and Sam's help too. Publix tries to encourage people to come back to the store and recycle plastic bags, and to even bring their own reusable bags. Sam doesn't even provide its customers with plastic bags at all. Random people who do accept plastic bags when shopping 
Take the bags home, but don't throw them away. I think that more people should think twice before accepting plastic bags to take home. Thank you. Hello, my name is Margo. I am the Vice President of Tech, the Environmental Club for Kids. We are working to help ban single-use plastic bags from stores and homes. Since we are trying to ban single-use pla plastic bags, Rose designed signs for us to put on the cash registers in stores starting with 18th Street. This is what they look like. They say, if you don't need a bag, leave it. Sponsored by Tech, the Environmental Club for Kids, Homewood, Alabama. And we are here to discuss what our city can do to support Homewood businesses to make the use of single-use plastic bags in Homewood decrease and eventually end. Hi, my name is Abigail, and we would like to set up a table on 18th Street to educate people about plastic bags and ask them to sign a petition and to promise to not get a bag if they don't need one. Like, if they only purchase a few items and can easily carry them to their car or bring their own bags to use. Also, we know that because of all the California forest fires, there's been a paper shortage. Trader Joe's, who, you can normally, who normally you can always count on to have paper bags, now has to use plastic bags, but the good thing is that they use reusable bags. Hi, my name is Chelsea. I'm the Secretary of Tech. So I'm the one that has a lot of questions. So who holds the authority to pass local ordinances? City Council. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how do these ordinances get passed? I didn't know it was going to be tested. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Your first day. That's, that's right. So uh, someone proposes them, one of the counselors proposes them, and then uh, we discuss them and then vote on them. Oh, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it might go to a committee yeah. too. And have you, do you do y'all know what other nearby communities are doing with this issue? Has it like ever been brought up? Uh, Miss Andrus might be able to speak to this a little bit more, but there there has been discussion of recycling and uh, expanding the recycling to include uh, more plastics. Am I correct about that, Miss Andrus? You are. Yeah. In fact, we're currently working on it as we speak. Cool. And who should we talk to to help give our club some direction? I think I'm going to direct you to Miss Andrews. Right She's going to be right here. She's her, that's your person right there. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have any advice to help us reach our goals? Well, I'll say this. I'm impressed with you for uh, <laughs> what you've done so far, um, which is very impressive. And very I appreciate you bringing the issue up. And we will continue a conversation with you. And I think Ms. Andrus is probably the person to do it because she is already working on this issue a little bit uh, or a broader issue that would include this one. Um, and I think uh, that we can start a dialogue between you and her uh, about and, that. And let me tell you, let me explain something. They very modestly said that they had a meeting with Shipped and then that they have a meeting on Wednesday with um, Target. Let me explain. We met with the CEO of Shipped. Yes. <laughs> and then Wednesday, we have a meeting with the Director of Sustainability for Target. Wow. These girls right here will be presenting to the Director of Sustainability for Target. So you guys have already done so much in such a short period of time. Can I ask you a question? What, where do you go to? Where do you guys go to school? Yes, we go to Edgewood Elementary. You guys look like y'all are headed to high school. Okay. <laughs> I have a question. Um, you guys mentioned um, setting up a table. Yes. Have you guys already set that up? No, we have not. I think. And Margo said that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we might okay. be able to work on that, particularly right. maybe somewhere at the old curve uh, would yeah. be my thought. Um, yes. And my guess is that Mayor McCluskey will be uh, more than happy <laughs> to help you with that. Yes, because since Christmas is coming, there are going to be a lot of paper, I mean, plastic bags <laughs> going around the air. So I think it'd be really smart to set up a table. I think we can uh, probably accommodate you with that. 
Yes. <laughs> Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank all of you again, and uh, congratulations on the hard work that you've already done. We all appreciate it. And we'll be looking forward to hearing more from you. All right, uh, next we have a, pro a couple of proclamations. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I believe you're up for those. mask and unfortunately face away from you guys as we do this um, but if I could have everybody for uh, National Hospice and Palliative Care Month come up here and join me I would appreciate it and I promise I will give you guys a ample opportunity to uh, talk and ask questions yourselves although following a group like that is going to be uh, <laughs> pretty tough so <laughs> that's a, yeah that's right so uh, this is a proclamation uh, for National Hospice and Palliative Care Month uh, for November 2020. Whereas for more than 40 years, hospice has helped provide comfort and dignity to millions of people, allowing them to spend their final months at home surrounded by their loved ones. And whereas hospice, the hospice model involves an interdisciplinary, team-oriented approach to treatment, including expert medical care, quality symptom control, and comprehensive pain management as a foundation of care. And whereas beyond providing physical treatment, hospice attends to the patient's emotional, spiritual, and family needs and provides family services like respite care and bereavement counseling. And whereas palliative care delivers expertise to improve quality of life and relief from pain can be provided at any time during an illness and hospices are some of the best providers of community-based palliative care. And whereas in an increasingly fragmented and broken healthcare system, Hospice is one of the few sectors that demonstrates how healthcare can and should work at its best for its patient. And whereas 1.55 million Americans living with uh, life limiting illnesses and their families receive care from the nation's hospice programs in communities throughout the United States in 2018. And whereas hospice and palliative care organizations are advocates and educators about advanced care planning that help individuals make decisions about the care that they want. And whereas the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services have pledged to put patients first in all of its programs, including hospice, ensuring a coordinated and patient-led approach to care, protecting patient choice and access to individualized services based on patients' unique care needs and wishes. Now, therefore, I, Patrick McCluskey, mayor of, the Ma mayor of the city of Homewood, Alabama, do hereby proclaim November 2020 as National Hospice and Palliative Care Month and encourage citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of care at end of life, discuss their end of life wishes with their families, and observe this month with appropriate activities and programs. representative of Affinity Hospice. I'd just like to thank City Council for this honor. Thank you all. We work diligently to make a difference in the lives of the dying every day. And it's our privilege to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Now I have one more. Mr. President, if that's okay. Yeah, um, if I could have everybody for Alzheimer's Awareness Month, please come up front and stand with me. All right, uh, this is a proclamation for Alzheimer's Awareness Month. 
Whereas over 5 million Americans, including more than 95,000 Alabamians, are living with Alzheimer's disease, and someone new is added to those ranks every 65 seconds. Whereas Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States, and the only leading cause of death that cannot be cured, prevented, or even slowed. Whereas researchers are working diligently to develop accurate ways to diagnose and treat Alzheimer's disease, and whereas the walk to end Alzheimer's is the world's largest event to raise awareness and funds for Alzheimer's and dementia care and support programs and research. And whereas the walk to end Alzheimer's in Birmingham will take place on November 15th, 2020. And whereas the Alzheimer's Association is here today encouraging Homewood businesses and residents to join the fight against this devastating disease by decorating their storefronts and spaces with purple as, where, as well as to wear purple to raise awareness about Alzheimer's disease and other dementia. Now therefore, I, Patrick McCluskey, Mayor of the City of Homewood, Alabama, do hereby proclaim November 2020 as Alzheimer's Awareness Month in Homewood and to urge all citizens to take steps to act now to end Alzheimer's, open their minds to learn the facts about Alzheimer's, and all other dementia, voice their support, and become an advocate to move the mission of Alzheimer's Association forward. Thank you. You want me to take it? I appreciate it. Please take some take some time if you want to, and this is yours. Uh, thank you. Um, my name is Kimberly Stevens, and I am the event chair for the Walk to End Alzheimer's in Birmingham. And this is Michelle Arino. She's uh, the event co-chair. This is our fourth year to do it. Um, City of Homewood has always been super supportive of the Alzheimer's Association, and um, I see that it's lit purple, which is really awesome. So it's really great to be part of the city, and actually the whole city of Birmingham has been super supportive over the past few years. But yes. The walk is on Sunday, it's virtual. Um, you can check out alz.org slash walk to learn more um, as we fundraise. And I just wanna shout out to the hospice people. My mother passed away in August and hospice is so important and palliative care is so important. So I just feel like there's a lot of good things happening tonight. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all for your time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Next, we will have the invocation. Uh, we have Charles Youngson from All Saints here to do the invocation for us. If everyone will please rise. Yeah, please. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you have cr granted us the blessing of calling this beautiful city of Homewood, Alabama, our home. Be present this evening with the people of Homewood and with our leaders, and especially guide the minds of this new city council with your wisdom, your justice, and your compassion as they meet to discern the greater good of our community. Bring them unity and common purpose, and when they disagree, allow them to do so respectfully and without bitterness. Make us all mindful as citizens and elected officials of the privilege and responsibility we bear to promote the well-being of all people in this city, loving our neighbors as ourselves, as you have taught us. I ask these things in your holy name. Amen. 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 Thank you. You'll face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. We're ready for roll call now. We, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Valter. And the room is okay. empty. Yes, sir. Uh, feels like we've been here a while. Um, roll call. Um, Mr. Gwaltney. Here. Mrs. Gear. Here. Uh, Mr. Alamon. Here. Mr. Wolverton. Here. Uh, Mr. Sims. Here. Mr. Jones. Here. Mrs. Smith. Here. Mrs. Nelms. Here. Mrs. Andrus. Here. Mr. Harden. Here. And President White. Here. Right. Right here. You got a Thank you very much. All right. Uh, next item is the uh, reading of the minutes from October 26, 2020 council meeting. I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes. So moved. Second. second. Motion by Mrs. Smith. Second by Mr. Harden. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That's 11 to 0. Uh, we also have the uh, minutes uh, that have already been distributed for the November 2nd, 2020 organizational meeting. I would uh, entertain a motion to dismiss with the reading of those minutes and for approval. Second. Motion by Mr. Gwaltney, second by Mr. Wolverton. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That also passes 11 to 0. All right, uh, next item is board vacancies and appointments. Um, Ms. Uh, Gear, I think we've got uh, an opening on the Arts Council. We do. Arts Council Advisory Board be open. Is that for <coughs> Ward 1? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't know how long you want to leave that open. Our next meeting is uh, November 30th. I don't know if that's enough time or if we need to push it into December. What's the usual time frame? Uh, it just kind of depends. <laughs> I don't know that there is a usual, but... Um, I would give it at least a month. What? And I was going to let you know, looking at the calendar, December is not lining up great because December 1st is a Tuesday. Right. So that would make our normal council meetings the 14th and the 28th, which is after Christmas, which they're usually before, and then the committee me meetings the 7th and the 21st, unless you want to roll the 28th back, and then you got to think about why it. Why don't we leave this open until December 14th, which I, I feel fairly certain will be our first, first council meeting. So why don't we do do it till then if that so works for you so they'll close at 4 30 then on 12 14. Yep. so the it'll it'll close for anybody to apply to, for that position everyone anyone that wants to apply for that position should apply by uh december 14th at December 14th. and they just okay. email me a resume and the answer said that they're interested in it and we'll also post a board vacancy on the on the website tomorrow mm -hmm. okay one. but they'll just email me and if you have more than one they'll email y'all okay great Thank you. All right. Uh, we also have uh, still have the at-large park and rec board opening that we have uh, 10 applicants. Is that where we ended? Um, <coughs> yes, our, our new uh, parks and rec uh, liaison. Uh, do you have uh, a time where you would like to do these interviews? I mean, I feel like we need to do it soon. I would agree. It's been a while. Yeah. Um, some of those people are going to forget that they've applied. Well, one person already asked, so they are starting to inquire by the time we'd stand by. Yeah, and know. yeah. Um, how about what does anybody think about Wednesday of next week, the 18th? Are you going to try to do them all in one day? No, we probably need to do it on a like, two day <laughs> schedule. Okay. I mean, right. Yeah. Just we come five minutes. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, five minutes. Elevator so, speech, go. Um, okay, so how about the 18th and the 19th of next week? That's Wednesday and Thursday. Anybody thoughts? Um, and it would be, I mean, not every single person has to come all the whole time. I mean, it's just kind of open. I mean, Did you start them at five. I think so. Start at five and do 15, 15 minutes, minutes each. So do about 15. So minutes. do five. Just half on the one on the Do, yeah, do half, half on the 18th, 18th, half on the 19th. Yeah. Okay, okay I will try to make that happen. Okay. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, uh, hopefully if I can get uh, poll workers there, we can get this done. This going to be challenging. Exactly. <laughs> this should be nothing compared to that. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Yes, ma'am. I will do that. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, then we have uh, some additions to the agenda tonight, although y'all took it easy on me. Uh, it's not as many as I thought it was going to be. So uh, we'll start with the committee referral agenda where we're going to add uh, two items. Um, the first is 07 11 20 request for consideration of temporary structure at Trinity Trinity United Methodist Church on December 5th through December 6th brought to us by counselors Andrus Gwaltney and Smith and that will go to special issues hey excuse me Alex yep I think that's actually there's actually two weekends involved in that okay um, I think it's two subsequent weekends Go they have on. got a rain weekend. Huh? It's a rain weekend. Oh, that's just the rain mm -hmm. weekend? Okay. But you may want to, I mean, we may need to go ahead and prove that. Should we yeah. go ahead and list that? Yeah. yeah. Should, I yeah. think it's the tw You want me to look it up real quick? I think it's, it's the 5th and the 6th, so it's the 12th and the 13th. 13th. Yeah. All right. And this is not the tent? Huh? This is not the regular tent. This is a new tent. <laughs> a different tent. tent. Yeah. It is a tent, and it's going to be on that same parking lot, that small it's parking lot. Structure, it's be a tent. Yes. Yes, it exactly. All right. Uh, next item also to co committee referral agenda uh, 08 11 20 request for consideration of changes to the zoning ordinance brought to us by Mike Kendrick, uh, myself, and uh, 
P and D Chair Councillor Andrus. These are some items that were recommended by the Planning Commission uh, that changed notice and some other things. Um, uh, and so that will go to committee referral and be discussed uh, next week as well. Um, all right, uh, then we also uh, have some additions to old business. Uh, the first is 181020, requested to declare the following items surplus, 2010 Ford Crown Vic, 2010 Dodge Charger, and a 1987 Heister lift truck. Next item is 191020, request to authorize the mayor to sign amendment to the contract with Tyler Technologies or New World CAD uh, for additional CAD export interface. And then the last one is 141020, request to add Wi-Fi access to Spring Park, brought to us by uh, Councilors Gwaltney, Andrus, and Thames. And I believe that I've caught everything, correct, Ms. Salter? Um, yes, sir, that's all I got. All right. Uh, then I would uh, entertain a motion to approve the amended agenda. So moved. I'm sorry, who moved? I missed it. it Jennifer, Jennifer thank you. <laughs> motion by Ms. Andrews, second by Mr. G Mr. Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. so we don't have any consent agenda. You got it. They didn't drop anything. Okay. Uh, so without a consent agenda, then we will move on to the old business agenda. The first item is 180820, a public hearing that was held on September 14th, 2020, to de consider declaring property located at 1125 Hardwick Lane, a public nuisance due to violation of ordinances 1910 and 1750 excessive growth. Uh, this was brought to us by uh, the code enforcement officer, Scott Cook. Uh, Mr. Cook couldn't be here tonight, but he did uh, send out an email. I don't know if everyone saw it because it was really right as we were doing committees. Um, but that uh, he, a lot of work has already been done on this. There's some other work that he is confident is going to be done uh, by our next meeting. And so his recommendation was that we carry this over one more time uh, and see if that work would be uh, completed before our uh, November 30th meeting. So uh, without objection, I will uh, carry that over. All right, next item, 12.03.20, uh, public hearing set for November 20th, 2020, uh, for reconsideration to rezoning property at 2927 Central Avenue from C1 Office Business Dist office Building District to I2 Institutional District, uh, coming to us from the uh, Diocese of Birmingham. Um, that public hearing has been set for uh, our next meeting, November 30 at 6 p.m. All right, uh, next item is 271020, uh, request to authorize the mayor to sign a contract for services to pay first quarter fiscal year 2021 budget appropriations for uh, the transit authority. Uh, believe it or not, the contract has still not arrived. Um, <laughs> <and> <laughs> if I did get a verbal confirmation via cell phone from Mr. Dickerson a little while ago that he would have it, and I think it has actually hit my email, so I will forward it to y'all. Hopefully we can y'all can look at it for the 30th. I w we won't hold our breath, but hopefully it'll be here. <laughs> I think I did see it, but I, we have tried twice, I promise. He thought he had sent it, so it's, I apologize for being on there twice. It's no problem. All right. Uh, so we'll carry that over without objection. Uh, next item, 181020, request to declare the following item surplus. 2010 Crown Vic, a 2010 Dodge Charger, and a 1987 Heister lift truck. And we will start with a report from finance. Mr. Jones. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. Uh, the Finance Committee met uh, an hour ago and, uh, and had discussion on this, uh, voted five to zero uh, to approve uh, declaring uh, those items uh, surplus. So five to zero coming out of finance. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, Mr. Kendrick, can we have a first reading of the yes, ordinance? Yes, sir. This is an ordinance to declare certain personal property as surplus bill named by the City Council as follows. Hereby established and declared that the following described personal property of the city is no longer needed for public or municipal purposes and therefore declared surplus property to wit a 2010 Ford Crown Victoria ending in VIN number 9170, 2010 Dodge Charger with a VIN number ending in 8019, and a 1987 Heister lift truck serial number ending in 943H. Section 2, the mayor and the city clerk be authorized 
and directed to dispose of the property by auction to the, public, to the highest bidder. All right, thank you, Mr. Kendrick. Any questions from council? Uh, if not, I would entertain a motion for unanimous consent. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Jones, second by Ms. Smith. Uh, roll call vote, please, Ms. Salter. Yes, sir. Mr. Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Gear? Yes. Mr. Alamon? Yes. Mr. Wolverton? Yes. Mrs. Sim? I mean, sorry, I'm so sorry. Mr. Sims? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Nelms? Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Andress? Yes. Mr. Harden. Yes. And President Wyatt. Yes. I so apologize. I will not do that again. She's done it to most of us. So <laughs> <laughs> we got we got we got a lot of more females this time. So I'm toggling back and forth. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the unanimous consent passes. I'd entertain a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Motion by Miss Andrus. Second by Mr. Gwaltney. Another roll call vote, please, Miss Salter. Yes, sir. That was Mr. Gwaltney for a second. Yes. Okay. Mr. Gwaltney? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mrs. Gear? Yes. Mr. Alamon? Yes. Mr. Wolverton? Yes. Mr. Nick Sims? Yes. Uh, Mr. Jones? Yes. Mrs. Smith? Yes. Mrs. Nelms? Yes. Mrs. Andrews? Yes. Mr. Harden? Yes. And President Wyatt? Yes. All right. So that item is approved, and that is Ordinance 2788. Yes. All right, next item is 191020. Request to authorize the mayor to sign amendment to the contract with Tyler Technologies New World CAD for additional CAD export interface. Uh, and we also begin with uh, a report from finance, Mr. Jones. Yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, Finance Committee met, uh, voted 5 0 uh, to uh, authorize the mayor to sign the amendment uh, to the contract with Tyler Technologies. Thank you very much. Uh, any further discussion? All right, well, we have a uh, recommendation from finance. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that passes 11 to 0, and that is resolution 20-168. Yes, sir. All right, uh, next item, 14-10-20, request to add Wi-Fi access to Spring Park, uh, brought to us by uh, mm -hmm. Councilors Gwaltney, Andrus, and Thames. Uh, and we have a report from Public Works. Mr. Wolverton. Yes, Mr. President. Um, committee met before this meeting today, <coughs> and Councilor Gwaltney uh, explained that Mr. Yates has provided a solution to provide Wi Fi for a cost, a uh, one time cost of $2,000, um, with an ongoing monthly uh, fee of $40 a month. Uh, we are undetermined on whether we're going to use AT&T or Verizon. It'll be based on connectivity. Um, and Berkeley Squires uh, reported that he had some money in his budget under contractual services to pay for the air card. <coughs> um, and so it will not need to go to fin finance. Great. And, and because of that, we won't need an, a resolution, but we will go ahead and uh, take a vote for approval yeah. um, since we have a any other discussion it, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say it was yeah it was um, moved to approve by mr. Sims and seconded by mrs. gear okay. miss gear yes you guys may already know this but I wasn't involved in any earlier discussion about it but there are actually uh, kids in Rosedale who don't have Wi-Fi access at home for school and um, some of the teachers were here tonight that have been trying to help them for the past six months or more uh, get Wi-Fi and and uh, and adequate and consistent service at home. So they're hoping that this will help. A lot of those kids live around this area, and uh, there was one family in particular they've been trying to help for over six months. But one family still that didn't have access, and they live a couple of blocks from Spring Park. Um, I mean, worst case, they they have a close place for access. So. Just FYI. Well, and thank you for that. And I, I agree. I think this will this will be a helpful thing, not just to have it in the park for for convenience, but will be helpful to that community over there and providing them with a, uh, a service that they need. Um, any other comments or questions? I had a yeah, quick Mr. question. Wolverton. And actually, I'm not sure, uh, Mr. Leo's onto the uh, library. 
Um, is the library up and functioning normalish hours? Do they have Wi-Fi there as well? I think right they do. They, now they they just recently mm -hmm. opened up, and there are still restrictions on how many okay. people can be in there and things like that. And that's that's a very new development okay. within the past few weeks. That's that's what I thought. So okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? All right. Uh, then we have a motion from Public Works. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, and that passes eleven to zero. All right, that brings us to the committee referral agenda. Uh, I would entertain a motion for approval of that. Second. Motion by Mr. Wolverton, second by Ms. Andrus. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> that passes 11 to 0 as well. I'm sorry, I sir. I'm he, he said what he, he said was doing. Wolverton, an, Wolverton, and Andrus. I wasn't on, just playing on, on my phone. Twice. I promise. <laughs> Flip the page. Okay, thank you, sir. No problem. Uh, yeah, I'm not. That brings us to other new business. Um, 04 11 20 request for consideration to change the date of the regularly scheduled council meeting from November. 23rd, 2020 to November 30, 2020, brought to us by myself. And I was going to let Councillor Smith know, I think the confusion might have been because we discussed it when we were setting committee meetings on the 26th for the But we never formally night, but did I, it. We could, Amy and I both searched, and we couldn't find that we did a resolution. So we, I think that's we discussed why. it. I just don't think, think we discussed it in a council did, but meeting. we didn't actually formally do it. We discussed it in committee meetings instead of council. Um, Motion. Yes, sir. Um, can we go ahead and address December while we're while we're working on November? Just go ahead. And we take, can take them both at the same time. Um, it's not to change the resolution. <laughs> I was well, just, I'm sorry. I'm just trying just, to just knock saying, it out. Just, this can't be that hard to answer. So, um, so the it be the thirtieth, and so typically what we've done traditionally is it has had the meeting on the fourteenth and the twenty-first of December rather than 28th is that not correct I, that would be my thought is that we would have committees on the 7th council on the 14th and then committees and council on the 21st <laughs> rather than have a meeting between Christmas and New Year's so you're saying you're, you're saying we're gonna have a committees on the 7th council and committee I mean council on the 14th and then both on the 21st, on the 21st. Okay. that work for everybody or does anyone else have another idea so council will be 1214 yeah. okay. 1221 got it that'd be my thought so is your motion my uh, motion to include that yeah it would be to to include that so uh, move the meeting from November 23rd to the 30th and then um, have the um, move the December 28th meeting to the 21st with committee meetings that night okay uh, here's a second from mr. Alamo yeah. thank you very much uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? It also passes 11 to 0. And that'll be resolution 2169. All right. Uh, 051120 request for consideration of approval of vouchers for the period of October 27, 2020 through November 9, 2020. Mr. Jones, I believe you have the honors right now. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. President. The uh, went through several uh, questions and they were all answered the the only exclusion that I was going to recommend is that there were uh, a number of uh, reimbursements for uniforms and so uh, I'd like to exclude those and and talk through that with uh, with our finance department as well as the mayor and you uh, to kind of how we want to address this uh, but everything else was in line but I, I would like to exclude all of the uh, reimbursement for uniforms uh, for individual employees okay so we'll that, that'd be my motion okay that's the motion do we have a second okay. second from miss Smith any further discussion or questions all, right. all in favor aye. aye any opposed that also passes 11 to 0 and that'll be 2170 all right, and our last item, 06 request to authorize the mayor to sign the contract with the Homewood Chamber of Commerce and pay the first quarter of fiscal year 2021 budget appropriation. Brought to us by Mr. Burgett, our finance director, and Ms. Salter, or, 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 sorry, I'm reading this wrong, 
Mr. Burgett, our finance director and assistant city clerk, and Ms. Salter, our city clerk and assistant finance director. Um, I believe this is just our regular contract with the chamber uh, and the amount's already been budgeted, correct? Yeah, 60000 annually, and this is for the first quarter of 15000 Okay, and this is just the annual contract that we'd need to sign. Yes. Okay, any questions or discussion about that? If not, I would entertain a motion uh, for approval. So moved. Second. Motion by Mr. Harden, second by Ms. Smith. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That's also 11 to 0, and that'll be 20 171. And believe it or not, with that, we're at the end of the agenda. So uh, we move on to announcements. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I've got a couple of things to mention tonight, uh, a couple of good things, actually. Uh, one, had a uh, great conversation with uh, John Seal from Cardiac Solutions. You guys may remember uh, he was here with the, uh, the AED equipment that we're getting into the schools and the patrol cars and everywhere else. Um, and uh, his, his group has actually offered to do the training for our entire first responders uh, group uh, at no charge. So um, it's, it's going to be something that's uh, going to be very beneficial uh, to them and, uh, and we're, we're really thankful that, that he's made that offer. So we appreciate that. Um, wanted to say that uh, Mrs. Smith and I were actually on a, uh, a call last week in regards to the Christmas parade um, that we do every single year. Uh, we all know it's a, a, a highly um, uh, looked forward to event, but you know, we, of course, with the times that we're in right now, we have to kind of make decisions based off of uh, where we think we need to go. And as of now, um, we are planning on having the Christmas parade. Uh, we're, along with Parks and Rec and everybody else, we're making some decisions in regards to uh, how many people can be on the floats, how many floats are going to be allowed in the parade, um, just how far the parade is going to go if we have to change routes. So there are a lot of things that we have to, to take into consideration here. But we do know that there are several people um, throughout the community that are, you know, ready to get back to have, have a little bit of normalcy. Um, and so we're, we're trying to do this uh, as, as best we can, uh, socially distanced and safe. And so uh, as we progress through this, and Ms. Uh, Smith may know some more when she uh, gets to talk as well. But um, so we're, we're looking forward to that. But of course, if something happens, we will certainly uh, address the, the need as, as we get closer to the time. Did they, decide, um, did they pick a date yet, or is there still date to be determined? December third. We got to get started on the council float. <laughs> That's you get right. Floating out, y'all. Correct. Right now. Okay. December. 3rd. Well, and and uh, and so I mean there there will be some changes, but I'll let Miss Smith uh, to uh, bring those up as well. Uh, I'm looking forward to. Uh, I know we're um, one one weekend now. I know a lot of us are. Feel like we're drinking from a fire hose and that's what we're supposed to be doing um, but uh, but looking forward to my first department head meeting uh, I'll have that next Tuesday the 17th and we will be having those bi-weekly um, so looking forward to to that and then uh, lastly I want to talk about the second annual walk for a clause uh, that is going to be happening for those of you who don't know what that is um, it's a, a fundraiser to go towards the Mike's live foundation uh, for prostate cancer but if you've seen the witches ride that, that comes through here where all of the uh, wonderful witches and, and ladies of Homewood ride around on bikes and pass out candy to children, this is the males dressing up as Santa version of that uh, and walking through the streets of Homewood. Um, so uh, it is required that you do dress as Santa. And so you could have possibly 100 plus uh, Santas roaming the uh, streets of, of Homewood. Um, so, but that uh that's that's uh set for i believe it's let me see if the date's on here i apologize for having a look at my phone for it um it is uh sunday december the 6th um and it'll be from uh 1 p.m to 8 p.m it will start down at the corner by the little uh little donkey and the grocery group up they'll walk the streets and then end there as well so uh, but it's a it's a great uh, great foundation, and this is just the second year, so we're uh, we're expecting a, a much larger number than last year. But any of you gentlemen that want to do that, uh, <laughs> I know I will be going and donning a Santa suit, so I'd love to have you guys Ooh. out there as well. So yeah, I appreciate right. it. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Gwaltney. Uh No comments this evening. Are you going to start? Oh, I'm sorry. I, no, 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 no. We didn't move on. I still have my finger on the button. So.
sorry. Um, I assume finance is taking the 5 p.m. slot as normal? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, how long do you need? <laughs> so I will set public safety for 5.30. I didn't know we had this part of the meeting. Uh, I, I'll be more prepared next time, but uh, just to say I have tons of questions, but um, I made it through night one. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it was a rough night, too. Council on committees. I was going to say, we, yeah. it's baptism by fire tonight. So <laughs> we understand. Mr. Alamont. No, sir. Thank you. Mr. Wolverton. Wild couple days. Um, just uh, want to <clears throat> say thank you to the two organizations that were here uh, tonight. Um, I have a grandmother that uh, suffered with Alzheimer's for 15 years um, and passed away. And then, obviously, uh, I've, I've told a few people, but um, uh, an extended family member. Um, Trista's grandfather um, had a few months as of Friday to live, and then they got a call uh, yesterday afternoon, and that was revised to a few days. So he's he's actually on hospice um, currently. So um, she flew out there in a whirlwind this morning, and uh, so the both the organizations are fantastic um, and and filled with fantastic people trying to further those causes, um, and I think. You know, the longer we're all around, the more uh, we all are, are touched or affected by people that, um, yeah, th that are that are in some way tied or linked to those to those causes. Um, so and that's that's really that's a, that's that's it tonight. Um, I just want to thank you guys for uh, bearing with me on the the first uh, chairing of Public Works. Are you going to set it for next week? And I am going to set it. Okay. You said 15, 30. You said 15 then? Okay. I will take 545. And I believe, well, <clears throat> yeah. I don't think I'm even going to need 15 minutes, but we'll set it for 15 minutes. Okay. All right, Mr. Sims. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, so I would just like to give a couple updates. So I'm actually the liaison to the beautification board. And related to that, I wanted to make sure everybody knows that quarterly, the beautification board, in partnership with the chamber, uh, announces a, an award for people who are you know, doing a great job maintaining and displaying their businesses. And I want to let you know, in quarter three, the winner of that was actually the Oxmoor Animal Clinic. And so congratulations to them for everything they do for our city, making it beautiful and doing a great job um, taking care of our pets. Also, uh, for quarter four, nominations are now open. So it's a great opportunity to show off your Christmas decorations if you're a business around. So uh, you can go online to the Chamber's website and, and apply. So I highly recommend that you do that. Uh, another thing as far as chamber related, the holiday open house uh, actually started last week. As you may know, because of the pandemic, it, it's not just one night, it's actually a series of nights and that's going to continue through, uh, started last Thursday and it's going to continue through this week on Wednesday, November 11th. Is, is the 11th Wednesday? Is that right? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so yes, yeah. so it goes through this Wednesday um, with performances at 3 p.m. each day. So please check that out. More info uh, on the Chamber's Facebook page and website. And then finally, I want to also say and follow up to the Edgewood presentation by Tech, which was fantastic, by the way. Thanks so much to the group for coming out and doing that. Kind of within that theme, as a reminder, a week from this Tuesday, Tuesday, November 17th, will be an opportunity to recycle your number five plastics. Um, from noon to 7.30 behind the uh, community center in that parking lot. And um, that's probably something maybe 
Councilor Andrews, you sometimes update. Sorry if I'm no, stealing you're fine. your thunder. That, that actually ends up behind, under my deck, which is where it's all being stored yeah. right now. So, so we'll, we'll, we'll try to that. we'll try to um, persuade people to take it there first and not straight to your house. But, <laughs> um, and and then one more thing. Uh, thanks so much to everyone who worked with uh, at the polls last Tuesday. Uh, I think Homewood does an exceptional job at the. Uh, polling locations. I mean, I saw it during the municipal election and it was evident as well on election day on November 3rd. It really goes, uh, I, I've, I saw people show up at the wrong place and actually get hand walked to the front of the line at another place, um, at another vo voting location from the library to uh, the community center. I saw people who, um, you know, needed special accommodations taken care of. It, it was it was really fantastic to see everything that goes into that. And you know, congratulations and a huge thank you to everyone involved with that, from the clerks to the locations to the uh, poll workers. Thank you all very much for for what you do related to all of our election days. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sims. Mr. Jones. Uh, yeah, my my son went to the polls. To he was excited about. Uh, <coughs> first uh, national election and uh, he got up there waited in line got up there and they said well you're uh, registered in Tuscaloosa so <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he, he was not happy but he he drove he drove and he was he said it was the last vote that he had at the polling place so he made it in time I to vote in Tuscaloosa huh? <laughs> yeah so anyway uh, they were very nice to him and uh, and mayor I want to thank you for um, you know th th these are tough times to decide to, to proceed with, with the parade and I think we can do it and uh, I'm excited that that we're going to do it we can't just continue to uh, postpone everything and, and and cancel everything and so I appreciate the leadership and trying to make it happen it might not happen but I, I appreciate the leadership and I want to make one other quick comment um, and Miss Andrus will attest to this you were talking about the AEDs and um, my youngest son was in the scout troop that put in the AEDs on the trail and it's just an amazing story he was so proud putting those out there and then it was two it was less than two weeks later that that person collapsed on the trail and that that AED saved that man's life and that made a big impact so the, the more we can do with that the, the better so that that was really really good and then one other thing on recycling if we can get back and and do more uh, communication on not bagging up your your recycling i know we do that we do that here but if there's a way we can get them to send out another flyer that was very helpful i found an old one as i was cleaning out my desk and they used to send out those she, uh, mary liz ingram from, from the hcc sent me a picture today they've got a big old stack of them ready to go okay. out again Okay. But we are meeting, I don't mean to interrupt you, but if you want to join us tomorrow at 8.30, we are meeting with the mayor and with Robert um, to talk about what we found out in Vestavia okay. last week. So, you know, we'll be here at 8.30 if you want to join us, Walter. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. And then finances at 5. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Ms. Smith. Um, so, I, yes, uh, super exciting about the um, Christmas parade. It was a, a big discussion amongst uh, part board members and the, the programs committee. Um, like Patrick said, we are, we have, we are conditionally doing it. Of course, if, if, uh, circumstances change, we will, we will make adjustments as necessary, but it is scheduled for the third. Um, we are going to limit the number of floats, um, the standard floats, the council float. Uh, we are hoping that the high school band, I think they were still talking to Mr. Cooper about what that would look like. Um, they may limit the band. It may not be the full band. It may be just juniors and seniors or whatever, but they're working on that. Uh, they were also trying to see if the homecoming court, since they did not get to actually have a homecoming, um, might want to be on a float uh, in the parade. Um, and then the council and the mayor, uh, of course, uh, will not count in that small number, but there's also going to be restrictions on, there's not going to be any walking groups. Um, participants have to be masked um, they're working on like Patrick said trying to figure out because there's different size floats if you've got a 15-foot trailer you may be able to have more people than somebody who has a 10-foot trailer um, so they're still working on that all floats have to be decorated so no just regular old 
single pickup trucks driving down the road. Um, it's got to be an actual float. Um, and some other, some other restrictions that Rusty and them are going to put into place. And hopefully, and, and we were talking about the route possibly being either extended or shortened depending on what we think is actually the best because shortening it seemed like that might condense people more. Making it a little longer felt like maybe we could spread people out a little bit. Uh, we won't be stopping, Santa will not be stopping and getting off the truck in front of uh, City Hall. Um, he'll just keep on trucking. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, probably with a bunch of kids chasing get after him. He got to get back to North Pole anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's, he's got. He's gonna be very busy. He got work to do. Um, and uh, we won't be. Let the band won't be performing like they usually do. Um, so they're, we're trying to make some choices that will prevent the crowding um, that we see in in the past. Um, and probably floats instead of stopping in front of City Hall and people getting off. We'll probably continue to go on to unload over on Central so that it will prevent that stop gap that happens sometimes. Um, but I, I hope that we're able to do it. Um, I think, you know, a lot of it's going to be about personal responsibility and people doing the right things. We're not going to throw anything. That's another thing. We're not going to throw anything off the float. So no candy, no beads, no moon pies um, to keep people from. You have to table. shut Joe down. I know. I know. <laughs> um, the, the, the hope is that we get a lot of civic groups. We get the, the scout groups and the things like that, the Exceptional Foundation, um, and that we don't have as many of the businesses. We're, we're not preventing them, and those will probably be, but we're going to let those civic groups um, probably register first uh, to get those groups in, because you do want to, you know, have the cute scouts and the cute brownies and all of that fun stuff. So anyway, I think it'll be a good, a good plan. I think we've got a good plan in place, and it's just a matter of all the stars aligning to make it happen. So we'll look forward to that on December 3rd. And I will be giving y'all more information as we are able to uh, to get it done. And I'm hopefully, um, Rusty's supposed to be putting together a flyer that we'll put out on the website so that people will have all the rules and know what the restrictions are. Um, uh, I'm going to set public issue, I mean special issues. Um, did you say 15 minutes? Okay. So I'll, um, I'll set mine at 6. And Jen, I'll probably need... 30 minutes because Ron Thompson is coming so I'll probably need um, 30 minutes just in case mm -hmm. so 6 to 6 30 um, and uh, to echo Nick's point um, our poll workers are amazing I had so many friends it was kind of fun going to the library and voting because I saw so many people that I knew who were working the polls and um, it was a long day for them and like my friend Jennifer Tuning said they did not sit I mean they did not stop all day there was no like oh it's a downtime there was no downtime <laughs> um, so for people who gave up their time including uh, former president Wright's wife Katie she was uh, on duty at the at Shades Cahaba all day um, so for all those folks who who sacrificed their time to do that it was a I was very impressed and proud of them for doing that thank you very much Miss Nelms I mainly just want to echo the sentiment of everybody about the poll workers and election day and how smoothly everybody helped that go. And then, of course, behind the scenes, I was able to, as long as I've lived in Homewood, I've, I was able to learn about what Melody really does for people. <laughs> um, my daughter was the first one to vote in the municipal election, and she's still, to th this week, still talking about how Melody took care of her and, <laughs> you know, where she sat and, you know, how she made the process, you know, so easy for her. And then her first actual in-person one was this past week. So um, thank you. You're welcome. And <laughs> That's great. But thank you, um, you know, because behind the scenes, folks don't see that as much as they do when they come into the library, into the polling station. So just thank you for everyone and especially um, behind the scenes here. I didn't, and I didn't really have to do anything for the national election, so it was really good. <laughs> Although I got a lot of calls, people thought I did. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Miss Andrews. Okay, um, Andrew, you started to say something to Barry. Did, are you okay yeah, on time? No, I, I had a, just a reconsideration. I, I didn't know if you thought there might be any more spirited discussion on 020920, and maybe I needed longer than 15 right. minutes or if that's even going to be settled in the next week. I don't know. That's why I wanted to circle back on it. Um, 
probably go either way, but it, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't I don't believe anybody even came no, to the last know, meeting. They, they, they knew they, they will like, for sure. What's that? They were told not to spend time because they knew it was going to be here. Gotcha. They would have been here otherwise. Yeah, it, it'll have some people here when we when we get to it. So. Um, so do I need longer than fifteen? Well, it just I, I'd say just leave it at fifteen. There's a chance that it may be it may put us behind, but if it does, rather put us behind than sit there and without anything to do. Sure, it does. So I'd say I'd say let's leave it away. Okay, sounds good. Thanks. Okay, well, with that, I will then set p and for 6.30. Um, so, looking forward to that. Um, speaking of people that work behind the scenes that don't get very much recognition, last week I went for a run, and I was rounding the corner, and all of Randy's guys were putting up the Christmas tree for the beautification board. So, I was like, oh, that's great. The tree's going up. Oh, I forgot. It's the chamber. And I was all excited. It was great. So, then I just come running back through Ward 5, and then there's... Um, the guys picking up all the trash and I was just working so hard and then I go over and there's the claw truck and the claw trucks out and this whole long stretch and then I get up to the triangle at uh, Hampton and Ponciana and they're the guys cleaning up I mean this is like at 745 in the morning and they're clearing out the triangle at uh, Ponciana and Hampton so they've been clearing our triangles out so I just want to give a shout out to Berkeley and Randy and Public Works and thank all those guys for all the work they do um, we have our first meeting on Monday morning with our Jefferson County legislation uh, delegate, which our delegation, which I'm very excited about, and I want to thank you for the opportunity. This is a perfect uh, role for me, I think, because I really love working with some of those folks, and so I'm um, looking forward to kicking off a you know regular relationship with them and chatting on a regular basis. And so we'll have that meeting on Monday morning. Um, and then I wanted to just mention. I know you guys are, I know you all know this, but um, I'm on the um, Unified Command for COVID and it's, it's not good. Like we're, we're, we're going the wrong direction. I know y'all all know this. I know everybody's careful, but just be aware cases are going up. People are going to be indoors gathering. The weather's going to get worse. Just, you know, uh, you know, the hospitalizations are starting to go up again. Um, just, you know, it's easy to to forget I do too and just keep that in the front of center and as you're gathering as we get into the holiday season just make sure you keep your social distance and wear your masks and that's it mr. Harden it's always tough being last because everything gets taken from you but, um, <laughs> I do want to welcome the new council members um, to the City Council it is uh, kind of new still for me too and so there's still stuff that comes up and I scratch my head thinking man I've never seen this one before um, but uh, on here I had a thank you to Berkeley for the triangles making them look so nice uh, you know that makes us people think finally they're doing their job they're making the place look nice and so I didn't know Berkeley was going to be doing that and it looks really good and uh, um, I also want to do a shout out my my wife's aunt uh, Sarah Dominic Clark died this weekend at 102 wow. and she I don't know I tried to look it up she clearly wasn't the first woman in Alabama with a law degree but I think she got her law degree in the 1930s yeah so um, so she uh, then went on to teach at Cumberland for a number of years and uh, she lived over in Summerby so she was a Homewood resident in the later part of her life but uh, you know that, that's a long distinguished career that she had so and uh, other than that I'm glad to see the mayor here <laughs> right uh -huh. could be worse I could be sitting in front of him um, I've just got a couple of quick things first is uh, City Hall will be closed on November 11th for Veterans Day. Um, uh, and while we're at it, happy Veterans Day to all of our veterans. Uh, and thank you for everything that you've done for our country. Um, and then secondly, I would just like to uh, thank Melody um, because uh, we've got a number of people in new positions uh, at this point. I guess there's six of us that are in a new position. Um, and you've you've helped all of us immensely uh, with every with adjusting to those and getting used to them and um, getting us you know keeping us running smoothly 
Well, it, it, it's, it's not easy to just uh, be plopped into a new position in the middle and, and keep when, when stuff's already moving and, and you have helped us keep stuff moving uh, and flowing in the right direction. So we appreciate that. So with that, uh, we will be adjourned until uh, November 30th. Thank you.